Thank you for coming on short notice. I'm actually surprised that you called after our last conversation. Yeah, I, I apologize. I, um... Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess I attacked you out of my own guilt. Mm, well, guilt can yeah. be quite crippling in situations such as these. It was unfair to question you. Or your methods. Well, the important thing is that you're both ready to work with me. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm sorry that it took me this long to see it. I just... When Annie went through that, it really changed my life, and I did not know how to deal with it. Mr. Lavery, in no way did you contribute to Annie's behavior. Do you still think that she's faking insanity? Absolutely. Annie is pretending in order to avoid prison time. It's very common amongst criminals. But I have altered my treatment plan. In fact, I'm expecting a breakthrough very soon. Specifics aren't important. What's vital is getting to the truth behind Annie's behavior. OK, um, what was it that, that made you believe that Annie was faking? Well, an accumulation of things. Prior to Oak Haven, Annie's behavior became very large and theatrical, as if she was trying to make a statement. And you're not there to monitor as well as we can. In-house, we've witnessed her going in and out of these delusions at very convenient times. But when she thought she was Emma, I, I, I swear she believed it. Ah, yet another showy, crazy act. But when she escaped, she knew exactly where to find you. She knew who you were, and her mind was sharp and focused. Please, look, you've got to trust me. I've dealt with numerous cases such as this one. Well, if your treatment plan works, <clears throat> what's next? Annie will be fit to stand trial. Convicted and sent to prison where she can't harm anyone else. That is what you want, isn't it? Of course. Yeah, we, we just want to put all this behind us. Okay, well... Listen, I'm going to be late for my next session. Okay, well, um, thanks again for coming. Okay. And uh, honestly, we will cooperate from this point forward. Great. Okay. What's important is that we're all on the same page. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. She's gone. So, what'd you think? <sighs> She's got an agenda. And Annie is definitely her target. So you agree that Dr. Sinclair is out for Annie's blood? <laughs> definitely. She acts more like a, a DA trying to nail a conviction rather than a psychiatrist trying to rehabilitate a patient. What should we do? You talked to Jesse yet? No, we haven't talked to Jesse. We need some evidence that she's acting unethically, that she's breaking patient care laws. Well, I'll definitely do whatever I can do to help. Thank you. Ted, I appreciate it. I know Annie hasn't made anyone's life very easy. Well, I got to get to work before okay. Erica sends the bloodhounds to find me. See ya. See you later, huh? Good luck. OK. Have a good day. What are you looking for? Medical databases. See what we can dig up on the esteemed Dr. Riley Sinclair. You got anything? Yeah, nothing we can use. How about you? Yeah, yeah, I got lots about her impressive career. That's about it. Listen to this. In 2001, Dr. Riley Sinclair was honored at the Federal Conference on Meta Mental Illness as an exemplary psychiatrist. The award carries a special distinction because honorees are nominated by individuals and families who are affected by mental illness. Hmm. Oh, yeah, well, it says here she also won something called the Winter Fellowship. It's kind of impressive. Only five other people in the country, and they all had interests in psychiatry and law. I mean, she's a saint. We are not going to find anything on her. Maybe not. There's something here. Give me a minute. What? What do you got, fraud? Identity theft? Forgery? Because we're probably going to need all three of those to bring down... No. Just a two-year gap in an otherwise very notable career. Buckle up, Doc. There's a chance you're going down. About five years back, she quit the hospital where she was on staff. Didn't go back to work for two years. It's a start.
Well, she could have gone on sabbatical to write a book or have a baby or deal with family mm -hmm. issues or no, something. No, I don't think so. I mean, it says here she's the only child of uh, parents who are dead. She was never married. She has no kids. Okay, then maybe she took time off to teach. Well, it's not listed, and there's no publication since then. Okay, so you're telling me that, that she took two years off and nobody has any idea what she did? Yeah. And don't you find that odd? Two years is a long time when you're living on the fast track, trying to collect all those awards. I mean, I find it odd, but we need more. Well, check this out. When she did go back to work, she did it at another hospital in a different state. All right, let's go with that. So how are we going to look into those missing years? You got the doctor's phone number? Yeah, what are you going to do, call her and ask her? Why not? Just give me the phone number. I got an idea. It's, uh, 555-0183. Hello? I'm calling for a Dr. Riley Sinclair. Speaking. Hi, uh, doctor. My name is Ben Pearson. I write for Forensic Watch magazine. We're doing a series of articles called Cracking the Criminal Mind, and we're rather impressed with your accomplishments. We'd like to, to profile you if you're uh, amenable. What would I have to do? Not much. Just agree to uh, an interview and a visit to your place of work. If you're willing to meet for a drink, I can lay it out for you. How do you feel about confusion in uh, half an hour? I can be there in 20 minutes. My sessions are actually done for the day. That would be terrific. I'm looking forward to meeting you. Bye. Still got it. You haven't seen anything yet. Do you mind if I record the interview? No, go right ahead. God. Um, so, um, I got to admit, I became a bit of a fan when I was researching your background, forensic psychiatry, especially the, the Donaldson versus Harold case. That was something else. Yeah. The patient was faking mental illness to avoid punishment for murdering his, his entire, entire family. family. And he would have gotten away with it. Mm -hmm. Never would have been conviction were for you. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, your, your track record of putting these people away, it's, it's impeccable. <laughs> that's my job. Yeah, easy to say. I mean, let's face it, Doc, murderers, they, they've got a lot to lose. It's got to be tough to, to break in through and you know, rifle through that kind of mind. No matter the level of, of premeditation, it's still aberrant behavior. It's got to be daunting to live with and a kind of mental instability. Well, look, I break it down to its simplest form. A criminal is a human being. And as long as you don't lose sight of that, it's easier to get into their mind and even empathize with them. <laughs> you put them away. You're, you're, gonna, you're telling me that you, you empathize with the killer? It's amazing what you can feel for someone when you listen to their story, when you know where they're coming from. You can even put judgment aside. Come on. There are too many people around who can compartmentalize those kind of thoughts. why I chose this profession. Because right or wrong, a patient needs to be heard. They need to be nurtured. And a patient therapist bond can be extremely strong. Strong as love.